Welcome to the workshop and masterclass learning series presented at the 10th edition of BMO IFSA Toronto 2021, the largest South Asian film festival in North America. This year also coincides with the renowned late filmmaker Satyajit Ray's birth centenary, and we're celebrating 100 years of Satyajit Ray with his uh, film screenings, workshops, and masterclasses focused on his work. Today, we have a very special guest with us whose work has been celebrated and appreciated by the South Asian audience worldwide, Divya Datta. Divya Datta is an actor, author, and now a poet too. A national award winner who has acted in more than 100 feature films in Hindi and Punjabi language. Few notable films like Veer Dara, Bhag Milka Bhag, My Friend Pinto, Stanley Ka Dabba, to name just a few. Her first poem that she wrote titled Jab Sab Thik Hogana, about going into lockdown in the country has been much appreciated. With an interesting lineup of feature films, web shows and short films, Divya continues to work in films while she's writing two books. Divya Datta this year backed Filmfare OTT Awards for Best Actress in Supporting Role for Drama Series Special Op. She was also much appreciated for her short films, Sleeping Partner and Relationship Manager. Her forthcoming films include a comedy film directed by Ume Shukla and Dhakar, co-starring Gangna Ranaut. At our festival this year, we will be screening her film, Sheer Korma, which has been internationally recognized and celebrated for its portrayal of LGBTQ relationship in Hindi mainstream cinema. Also screening at the festival this year is Mirror O Mirror. Without further delay, I would like to welcome Divya Datta. Divya ji, welcome and thank you so much for taking the time out for this much awaited conversation. Thank you, Obi. Thank you so much for a lovely introduction and it's a pleasure being here on this platform with you today. So let's start with your journey. You've just completed almost 26 years in the industry and you're born in Sanewal, Ludhiana in a city in Punjab. A well-educated doctor family, both your parents were doctors. You lost your dad at a very young age. So how does a little girl from Punjab dream of a career in the film industry? How did you make that choice? Well, yeah, it's strange that I was from a family of doctors in Saneval, which was a small town. And um, it was actually very strange to just even dream of something like that. And, um, but I think I was an ardent Bachchan fan, uh, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan. And uh, I used to tear my mother's saris and dupattas and um, just have, get just the neighborhood kids come by and just bribe them with uh, samosas and gulab jamuns and say, hey, come watch me perform. And, uh, but the applause that came by, the acknowledgements that came by, hey, Ikbar Orkar, Pujo Aata Tha, you know, I was the entertainer of the class. So uh, that um, kind of got on to me and I was like, this is something that I'd like to do always. And um, so, yeah, I think this was like a kind of a dream that I had and I used to daydream about it, that I have to be an actor. And I remember in between my um, uh, classes or in between my study sessions, I used to uh, keep saying, and the best actor award goes to the Vyadatta. I just kept saying that, I don't know why. And somewhere I think the universe hears that. And um, I got selected in a talent hunt, which was done by a magazine. And here I am um, far away from Punjab, uh, but still a Punjabi and um, just uh, chasing my dreams. So you've written uh, a very beautiful and a very poignant memoir telling us about your relationship with your uh, late mother. And um, also telling us uh, about you know what a strong role she has played in your life. So who Divya Dutta is today, how much of that can be attributed to your mom? Well, I think most of it, all of it, uh, because um, I think your parents are who you become, uh, their encouragement, their, their support to you. And my mother who had an unconditional support to me, she was always uh, believing in my dreams and she uh, stood against all odds. Whoever said if I shouldn't get into movies, she stood by and I'd say 25 years back, things were not the, you know, the same. They were 
uh, pretty conservative and coming from a Punjabi uh, secure, protective background, everyone was a little worried about their daughter. But uh, mom was um, holding my hand tight and she said, if she wants to uh, chase her dreams, I'll stand right next to her and believe in it. And that mattered a lot to me, Abhi. I think when, when your parents believe uh, in your dreams and support you unconditionally, that matters a lot. When a parent says, Main hu, uh, that matters a lot. And, um, and she always said, Main hu. and I still hear that within me when, whenever I need that support. And um, so, yes, I think most of my difficulties, most of my challenges that I faced in life, uh, that word mehu always kind of, you know, resonated somewhere and uh, it's always got me going and I have faced the biggest challenges. So, yes, that's how I came in here and that's how she's been my rock always. You know, with the kind of roles you've done in your entire career, you've established yourself as quite a versatile actor. You've done commercial cinema, you've done art house and you do it equally well. Um, doesn't matter what the genre is. And your first foray into commercial cinema was through V Sara. So how did that role come your way? And although it wasn't, you know, um, a lead actor role at the time, it doesn't really feel that way. So how did you approach that opportunity? And um, how has that impacted your career journey so far? See, now we talk about every actor taking on diverse roles in consequential of whether it is a lead role or a parallel role or a negative role. I think I started a little earlier and I started it with Deer Zara because I remember, again, my mom had told me I was waiting for these stereotypical heroine roles. And she said, um, you are here to act, but do people know that you can act well? I said, no. Then she's saying, what are you waiting for? I said, I'm waiting for a good lead role. She's saying, why don't you just take on what is offered to you and do it so well that people can't avoid you or ignore you or, you know, just not notice you. Just make it impossible for them not to notice you. And um, that's when Virzara came my way. And um, when I got to know that it's a friend's role, I was a little disappointed because it was a Yash Chopra film. And it was always a dream for me to be launched by Yash Chopra. And uh, here I was being offered a friend's role. But I remember Aditya Chopra very, very um, uh, genuinely told me that this will be a role that you'll be remembered for all your life. And trust me on that. And there was something so genuine about it. And um, I had to believe that. And plus, I think my mother's words rang true that um, do your best in whatever has been offered to you. And I didn't realize Shabbo became like a landmark for me. Um, I gave it my best because there was such a such a star cast with me. I had to stand out and uh, I had to look over myself. I had to prove myself. I was a hungry actor who needed to be noticed and uh, that this was the only way for me to just add an X factor to Shabbo. And I think thankfully that happened. And in a very unconventional way, I was relaunched by Yash Chopra in the commercial world of movies. And I think uh, you are definitely remembered for that role. So you made a very good decision because Shabbo was one of the most loved characters who you know, helped uh, Shah Rukh Khan and Preeti Zinta unite. So um, I think you also mentioned in your book that uh, even when you went to Pakistan, people recognized Shabbo. Is that true? She, she was a hot favorite. That in fact, I got a, I got a series of a series in Pakistan, but my all time favorite. And um, I remember having been invited there to act in one of the very popular series because I was Shabbo. And uh, the kind of love and affection I received from the people there, it, it felt like, you know, reliving the movie again. It was a cross-border kind of a movie. And uh, I've done so many cross-border movies. It's very strange. I've done Shaheed Mohabbat. I've done Train to Pakistan. Then there was uh, Veer Zara and there were two, three others. So um, going and crossing the borders and receiving that love and affection was like very surreal, I must say, and um, beautiful. So you mentioned Train to Pakistan, actually. If we can talk a little bit more about that role, because that was a very unique role for you. And again, you know, uh, making the choice at the time, um, how did you approach that? And, you know, even in preparation, and I think that also helped position you in a different category of actors. 
It's a very interesting incident. I was being offered all the multi-starters that time and I wasn't so keen on doing them. And I used to live alone in my house and I sat near Babaji's Tasveer and I said, listen, I have come here. Now you give me a good film. Otherwise, I'm flying back to my mother tomorrow. I don't know what it was. It was a coincidence or somebody actually heard me. The next day I got a call for a train to Pakistan and I took my um, uh, all my glamorous pictures to the director, Pamela Rooks. And she saw them and she said, I hate your pictures. I said, oh, my God. Uh, gone the only chance that I had doing a different film is gone and then she said but I love you the way you look you like I need a child woman and you look like a child woman and that time I mean I think I have a petite uh, frame and I looked much younger and um, so in fact because of that I didn't get very glamorous glamorous roles with opposite heroes uh, in the commercial line but it gave me train to Pakistan and um, and that kind of like really changed things for me and um, I think it was a different role. I had to, the, the most difficult part there was I had to sing my own songs. And uh, I was very nervous. Dancing, I was very fond of. And there's a very interesting incident about that, which I'm also actually mentioning in my next book is um, I was supposed to sing and dance in the night, uh, in a night shoot. And I was very, uh, you know, it was a consolation that the whole village would be sleeping that time. Two in the night, wintry nights, who would be up? So I was like, thank God there's a limited audience and I can sing. So um, I um, was dancing and suddenly we heard a loud thud and um, the, the lights were turned around and the entire village was sitting there and they were so crowded watching the dance that one of them had fallen down in the pit. So, and there was such a chaos. I was so nervous. I was like, oh my God, now how will I dance? That's where I made some dear friends who were so encouraging and so loving. And they were all my seniors and they encouraged me, go, we're standing right next to you. That's where I learned the team effort, where the chemistry between actors, between unit members really translates into, you know, a better screen performance. So yeah, that was trained to Pakistan for me. Interesting, you mentioned that the the support and the you know chemistry how important that is so you know when we talk about um support from co-actors how much does that matter to you and has that changed over the years you know when you're starting your career um did you you know more and over the years since you're more established has it changed and if you have any um any favorite co-actors um I uh, totally believe in the chemistry to actors share. And for me, it really matters who I'm acting with because I think acting is all about reactions. And um, the moment you see somebody act, you the, the reactions automatically come by. And uh, it makes it much more easier, more organic. And I believe in more organic uh, acting rather than I can't do uh, too much of preparation or method um, as such, I just believe in the magic of the moment and something really nice happens in those shots. And um, so, yes, I think I've had some fabulous co-stars who've been really lovely. Shabana Ji for one, amazing. And um, Mr. Bachchan, I've been fortunate. Somebody who actually inspired me to join the industry. I've actually worked with him many times and it's been great. Farhan has been amazing. Shah Rukh has been amazing. Irfan, Nawaz. Um, they've been brilliant co-actors for me and I've thoroughly enjoyed the improvisations that fun threw at me and um, it was lovely it was like um, you know a back and forth happening during the shot and everyone has, was having a gala time just watching us and uh, so yeah I think it, it matters a lot who's with you it just ups your quotient of acting and whoever you are I mean I for me whichever uh, way I mean I even when I was a newcomer even now it matters to me who I'm acting with. Um, you mentioned uh, working with Shabana Ji so we're also filming uh, Sheer Korma at the festival this year uh, which is a story uh, a love story between two women um, so how was that how was working uh, on that and how did you actually um, you know choose that project what, what thoughts went into your head when you know choosing uh, something so different and unique? 
I think LGBTQ is a subject uh, which needs to be spoken more about and um, it more sensitively handled by people around. And its projection needs to be more sensitively handled, which I think is happening in many films now. And Sheer Korma being uh, one of them. And uh, the director, Faraz Ansari, I had um, done Stanley Kardabba with. He was the associate director there. And uh, that time he uh, had said, Didi, he calls me Didi, said, Didi, whenever I do my first project, you have to do it. And you take it as one of those lovely, polite conversations that happen. And um, I said, yeah, yeah, sure. And that was the end of it. But I soon heard from him, um, not soon, I mean, after a few years, I heard from him. And uh, one night, and he said, uh, Didi, I have a script for you. You have to read, you have to play Saira. And uh, I said, sure, I mean, you actually came to me with that. He says, yes, and it's been written with you in mind. So I said, oh, wow. And he said, if you don't do it, then I don't make it. So that, that responsibility on me as an actor, that confidence he had, that trust and faith, I think was very overwhelming. And then I read the script and it was beautiful. And both of us were weeping away while, you know, discussing it. And I was sure I was on board. Uh, these stories which you instinctively feel you belong to and you must be a part of, I think, um, are very uh, inspiring to me as an actor, which challenge you to do something you haven't done before. And Saira is somebody I haven't played before. And um, it was heartbreaking. It was beautiful. It was vulnerable. And I had two amazing actors with me and beautifully written. I'm sure the audience there is going to really enjoy it. So I've watched the trailer and um, I think I mentioned to you before as well, there's something so beautiful and pure about, you know, their relationship and, um, and what they are fighting against, you know, it, I think it's a beautifully done film. I can't wait, wait to watch it either. So I'm sure the audience will enjoy. Um, I want to talk about another role, two roles actually, that um, Sleeping Partner is one of the short films, which I just watched recently and oh, I was it. blown away. Um, so this is a character, a woman who has been um, sort of abused um, for a number of years in, in her marriage and really um, doesn't think much of herself. And then she chooses to, you know, challenge that and uh, she doesn't make that voice, but, you know, she's, um, she ends up in a situation. So how did that, how, you know, you're well established, how are you still choosing um, film scripts, you know, the short films and, um, you know, what's your motivation to choose a project like that? Um, this film, I was sitting with a writer friend of mine and he'd come to me with a few scripts and uh, one of them was a uh, sleeping partner. And I said, hey, this story I want to do. He said, okay, but I need a producer for it. It's just a story. It's um, So I said, yeah, give it to me. I'll take it to a producer. And uh, that's when I found Gunit Monga. And she loved the script. And um, I just wanted the story to be told. I mean, I, I just feel it's become like a norm, a normal thing to take this kind of domestic abuse for granted. And in your stride, women think it's a normal thing. I did it with the... Uh, two co-actors, Sanjay Kapoor and uh, Jitin Gulati. And uh, um, it was like uh, very comfortable. I was very comfortable shooting and everything. But when I came back, I was howling and I didn't know why. And I realized all the trauma that I was feeling as the character somehow had come back with me in spite of being in the industry for so many years. There are some roles that you bring back home without realizing. They just sit in your subconscious and they just take over. And I just thought I was just acting and I'm so shaken up. What happens to women who actually go through it every day as a, as a normal life? And um, so, yes, I'm glad that story was told. And I got so much lovely response, such good response from women all over um, who thought they were heard, who thought their story was told and who felt inspired to move out. I think it's similar, not quite similar, but the role that you play um, of Ishri history in uh, Bhag Milka Bhag, um, um, sister of uh, late Milka Singh. So, you know, it's a similar sort of, she is also a similar character who, um, you know, her husband is quite a domineering figure and she wants to help her brother. 
Um, she wants to support and says that, you know, unconditional love. How was uh, working, um, you know, with Farhan and as you prepped for the role, um, did you get a chance to uh, spend any time with uh, Mr. Milka Singh? Um, yes, I did. I've been fortunate to have spent time with uh, Milka Ji. I mean, it's been really sad that uh, he's not around with us anymore. But I think that's a legacy that lives around with us. And um, so, yes, uh, I was introduced to Milka Ji uh, by the director, Rakesh Mehra, and me and Farhan sat with him to hear his story from his uh, from his mouth. And um, it was amazing that you're doing a biopic on a legend and the legend himself is sitting and narrating his story. It was very surreal. It was beautiful. And uh, uh, the emotional bond that he had with his sister, I could gauge when I saw his moist eyes. And uh, with the, whenever he spoke about his Kaur, he was very emotional. And all his failures, all his successes, all his challenges, he spoke like all his heart out. And me and Farhan were all ears. And um, this film was very special, I must say. There were some magical moments as an actor. I remember the famous, uh, that Bali scene, where he, the earring scene where he comes and gives the earrings back. So Rakesh Mehra had said, um, okay, we have the scene with us, but I want you to make your own beginning and your own end. And I was like, uh, okay. So I was in my jeans and my shirt and I just went and sat and started doing the house chores. And uh, suddenly um, I just thought something wasn't right. And Rakesh Mehra said, hey, listen, why don't you just go and wear your costume? So I went, I wore my salwar kameez, put the dupatta on my head and suddenly my body language changed. And then it was amazing, the power of a costume. And then Farhan just decided I'll come and, you know, glares, I'll wear those uh, glasses and come. And I said, okay, then I won't recognize you. So that became our beginning just like that, but we didn't have the end. And Rakesh Mehra said, just flow with the scene, you'll find the ending. That day I learned the biggest lesson as an actor that you know we all have a subconscious mind, but even a character that you're portraying has a subconscious. And that was the most amazing revelation I ever had because when I was hugging Farhan, I didn't know where I would end it. I was like, is this the end? This would look so cliche if, if I'm just ending the scene, just hugging him. And I just recollected that we had just shot a scene like a month back where the younger Milka is being saluted by the father. And it just suddenly became Isri's memory for me, Isri's subconscious. And I just uh, moved past and I just saluted him. And that became the end of the scene. And by then everyone was crying and moist eyed and Rakesh Mehra didn't even say cut, I remember. But uh, that was one scene I will always remember. And I think that by far remains everyone's favorite scene as well. It, it's a very powerful scene. And uh, right, and it's so important because uh, especially given the Punjabi background, the Sone, the Avani, and they are so, you know, they carry such a important place in, in historically as well. You know, all the grandmas used to wear it. So I think it's a beautifully done scene. So Divya ji, you played these wonderful, excellent characters. And, uh, you know, when one watches these films, it feels like um, nobody else could have done a better job. So, you know, when you watch yourself, do you carry a stern critic in, in you still? That, or can you just watch yourself and, and be, you know, content with what you gave at that time? I'll be honest, the first time I ever watched myself, I'm a critic. I just watch it as, in fact, when I watch my older movies, it's like, Are, if I had done it now, it would be different. Uh, but yes, there's always this little nervousness, this little critique in you, which is always saying this could have been done better. But when you see it again, the overall thing, you feel, Are, not bad at all, yaar. Achha tha, cheek tha. Kabi kabi khud ko shabashi bhi deni chahiye. Bada zaruri hota hai. I mean, um, that self love. I think I kind of uh, lacked in. But now I'm trying to inculcate that. Divya ji, you're so full of life. Um, you know, when one watches you on screen, um, the impression that you leave is that you know you're filled with life. Um, and I think you know. And I've spoken to you, I get the same energy. Um, so how has this journey so far, being an actor, 
Um, how has that helped you live a more satisfactory, a more fulfilled life and a, and a deeper life if it, if it has? I think what I learned is from my mother is that accept life, you should accept it and face, face it head on. And when you're trying to chase your own dreams, uh, there will surely be challenges. And I hate that word called struggle, but um, I never use that. But I do feel that everyone faces challenges in life. And uh, in, the, in our industry, it's never like you've proven yourself. Like if I've come with, you know, here, the, the challenges can be very different for different actors. For me, it was like not work, but it was about being branded, uh, given an image which I totally fought for. And um, after Veer I sat at home for a year because I was flooded with offers very similar to Veer Zara. And I was the next best thing when it was Punjabi, uh, vivacious, chirpy girl around. And I didn't want to be looking the same and feeling the same on every set. I thought I'll be bored by myself. So audience to bore hoi jayegi. So everyone thought I was being uh, foolish because... Um, they were the bestest banners, the bestest roles, best money coming my way. But uh, I sat, I sat for a year and then I got uh, the leech a baby. And um, uh, after that role, um, everyone offered me sensuous roles. So then it became like a game for me. It was like, Are, achha, now I'm being branded like this. Now do something else. So when Milka Singh, Mil Bhag Milka Bhag came, I was the best sister in town. And then flooded with sister roles. And after that came Badlapur, which was again like the, the typical heroine opposite a superstar. So uh, it became super fun. And I think uh, after that now, past three, four years, um, I, I guess people have realized they don't bring me the similar roles. And I'm kind of enjoying roles, especially being written for me. And uh, so, yes, I think uh, one should take life uh, the way you want it. You have to build your own life and you have to take it and take control of your own stuff and uh, leave the rest on someone up there who's always guiding over. And I think I'm very lucky that I'm doing something I really love doing. And I don't I don't imagine doing something else ever. And um, I think Rab da and and uh, God blesses those who just are very passionate and uh, work on their, their craft. Absolutely. Um, so you mentioned about the audience. How important is, um, you know, what your audience feels while they're watching the film when you're actually shooting or before you choose the role? Do you actually actively think about what you expect from your audience? I think audience is the most important. Um, I, uh, in fact, when I hear a story or a script, I see it not from the perspective of an actor, but from the audience point of view. Would I enjoy this role? Would I like to see it? Um, what else, what changes would I want in this? Um, how should she be? All that stuff is from the audience perspective. And I think during all these years, um, you know, you either gain stardom, uh, which is easy, um, but um, what is more precious is that you, you gain admiration, you gain that confidence, you gain that faith as an actor. And I love it when people tell me that when you do a film, we surely know there's going to be something different in it. And I think it's very well earned. It, it feels great that I've earned it through uh, earning their love and finding it because I've tried doing different stuff and they have that faith and belief in me. And I'm overwhelmed with that. So talking about stardom, you're you know, a foreigner to stardom or critical acclaim and awards. Does that matter to you a lot as an actor? Um, and, you know, again, has it changed over the years? I'd be lying if I'd say awards don't matter. Of course they do. They're very rejuvenating. They kind of boost your spirit up. Um, an acknowledgement coming from your own clan of people who you've looked up to, who you're working with. When they acknowledge and appreciate you, it's always a booster. But saying that, I don't think that's the end of the world. I mean, it's always okay to move on and uh, life moves on, doesn't stop for anything and you do better stuff. And you, I mean, I've... Um, I've missed a lot of awards, but then I have gotten many too now, very recently. So it's all good, I guess. Now, um, you know, you're also, you've written one beautiful book, you're writing two more. 
uh, you've written your first poem, uh, which um, if you don't mind, hopefully towards the end of the conversation, you could recite a few lines for us. So you have so many different facets to your personality. Um, which one are you more focused on right now? So who is Divya Datta uh, now, and especially post COVID, if you've you know, uh, found um, another, uh, again, like another side to your personality? Well, um, Divya Datta necessarily is a child woman. And I think the child only comes comes out when I am with people who I'm very comfortable with. Of course, there's this work side of me, which is very serious. And I, I know a lot of people tell me, Are Papre, you come and we feel a little scared. I'm like, that's another side. I don't know what that is. But um, there's a serious work side and there is a fun me side, which is different. And they're, they're both actually a part of me. And uh, yes, COVID and lockdown really brought in a lot of changes. I'm somebody who, who likes to meet people, has many friends, has a social circle. Suddenly you are sitting at home doing nothing and uh, uh, by yourself and in your own company. And um, I think the biggest lesson I learned is being friends with myself, which I don't think I had been all these years. And I've, after many years, started really um, totally loving my me time and uh, enjoying it and cherishing it. And um, I think all of us had issues about escaping from something or the other. Um, it all came down to just being in the four walls and just sorting it out and facing it head on and becoming more compassionate about um, everything that is happening outside. I think it brought in a lot of change in me and uh, I'm sure it has happened with many other people as well. And somewhere it also helped me as an actor, I guess, because this time when I went to shoot, I found myself working differently and I don't know what it is. I can't point it out, but I really enjoyed it. I mean, I always enjoy my work, but this time it was like I was actually clinging on to it because I got to work after so long sitting at home and I realized that's my love and that's something I really want to go back to and that was the happiest being on the set. So what has been the most satisfying part of this journey, this work that you love so much? And um, on the opposite, have you had any disappointment which, um, you know, well, I think if you don't have disappointments, Avi, then you would probably not enjoy uh, the success that comes to you. Because if it comes very easy, then you don't uh, really, I mean, we, we as human beings take things for granted. But when you really work hard for something and it comes to you eventually, then it is really cherished. And of course, I've had disappointments. Everyone does. And um, I've been said no to when I was a newcomer. But uh, um it's uh, thankfully i had a good family support and it was i was told that this is not the end of the world it's fine you'll get another film and and i did and better films and better roles and i worked harder because there was this hunger as an actor to prove myself and this greed to to do a lot of good work and um, so yeah that um, that that has always been the case i guess so Divyaji, I have to keep the time in mind. I have a couple more questions and then um, I would like you to recite the poem as well. Um, one is, what can the audience expect as far as your future projects go? I know um, as I introduced you, I mentioned um, there's a comedy that you're working on, um, but what's um, in the near future in the six to 12 month range? Well, I have uh, the Barker Banerjee's film coming up, which is called Freedom, and I really enjoyed it as an actor. It was a different process of working. And then I've just done another web show, which again has been a different revelation as an actor. And uh, then I'm doing uh, this action thriller that you mentioned, Dhakar, and playing a, a villain in that and the antagonist in that film. And a very different me just came out. In fact, I was so astounded by myself this mean streak that I had in me because the director would say okay do this and I would bring in a meaner streak somehow and I was like where is this coming from but um, we all laughed about it but yeah it's interesting to just discover a different you a different side of you which you're probably not even aware of and um, then I'm doing Meshukta's comedy and then there's Anubhav Sinha's Abhita Party Shurui hai then there's, there are two feature films that I'm working on and uh, two international projects. 
So the, you mentioned the mean streak. Um, so are you, is that something new in terms of uh, playing on the other side of, of the, you know, you've done multiple roles, but they all invoke very positive feeling. No, sure. Uh, it was something very different and it's surely not a part of me, but I think it's surely something that I have observed somewhere or wherever, but I enjoy doing it very much. And um, it was uh, different. And I think when you're doing something different, it's, it's more, uh, what do you say, refreshing for your own self. And uh, the posters, when they came out, everyone said, hey, Divya, this doesn't even look like you. And that, I think, was very um, um, encouraging for me to just uh, keep experimenting and present yourself and differently and expand your horizons and just uh, walk uh, a path which is unknown. It's, it's lovely. Divya ji, um, anything you would like to tell um, an aspiring actor and also a um, message for our audience, the viewers who are watching uh, and they're all over the world right now, so. Well, I just want to say, I think acting is a profession which many, many, many young people really want to, you know, be in. But um, I just want to say, be very sure about uh, whether you have the knack of it or is it just like the glamour you're following and if it is the knack that you have for it then there are three p's you really have to follow there is passion there is patience there is perseverance and uh, these three things are really really important in our field because sometimes uh, you know we when we do a business we feel Are to abhi ho jayega. but in movies it isn't like that sometimes you have to wait sometimes five six years uh, you just remain a newcomer. I was a newcomer for five, six years. I mean, it's like you're experimenting, you're finding your ground, you're finding your own niche, you're finding your kind of people. You're new. And uh, so you need to have that kind of patience and not come with those time-bound things. Um, I remember somewhere Nasir Saab had said that uh, if you're coming with that time-bound stuff, then this profession is not for you because you have to give it your all and once you do i think there's no better profession than this one is and uh, for the audience who's watching me right now i just want to say a big thank you because i don't think i would have been an ounce of what i am without you your love that comes to me and your faith in me and um that continuous thing that i hear oh the her film her film surely we'll watch oh we like her very much i think that affection comes like not just an actor, but I feel that I'm a part of their family. And, and thank you for that affection that you sent me through my work and through all the social media. And I'm just grateful. And please watch Sheer Korma. Please watch Mirror and do send me your responses. And uh, we do live in tough times and you're watching us right now. And uh, just want to wish you all loads of good health and happiness. And just want to say... Um, so here's wishing you loads of love. This is my mother's line. So just wanted to say it straight from the heart. And want to thank you, Avi, and thank you, Vanoop, and thank you, Sunny, for having me here. It's been a pleasure and have a good festival. Thank you so much, Divya Ji. And um, if you don't mind, um, I would like you to share your poem. Um, yeah, sure. Yes. Jab sab theek ho gana, to ye to karte rahenge. Wo jo doston se har tisre din video call karte hain. Apni wo gappe, wo recipes exchange karte hain. Kaha milta hai wo mauka bhag daud ki zindagi mein. Wo ek dhama chokri karte rahenge. Jab sab theek ho gana, to ye to karte rahenge. वो घर पे पुरानी एल्बम देखकर एक साथ बचपन की यादें ताजा करना वो टी शर्ट पजामे में आरडी बर्मन सुनते हुए मिलकर सफाइयां करना वो मस्ती वो पिलो फाइट्स वो शरारत करते रहेंगे जब सब ठीक होगा ना तो ये तो करते रहेंगे वो जो नीचे चौकीदार भैया है ना उनसे रोज का चाय नाश्ता पूछना एक दुआ सलाम करना वो घर से दूर है इसका एहसास कम करना ये भी आते जाते करते रहेंगे जब सब ठीक होगा ना तो ये तो करते रहेंगे वो गली के कुत्तों को हाय हेलो करके रोटी देना 
वो गाती हुई कोयल के बोल समझने वो छत पर जाकर कौ के लिए पानी रख रहे रब की इस कायनात से दोस्ती करते रहेंगे जो गलत कर दिया था हमने उसे ठीक करने का मौका मिला है उस ठीक को हम और अच्छा करते रहेंगे जब सब ठीक होगा ना तो ये तो करते रहेंगे um i would like to again say thank you for your time and thank you to all the viewers who are watching please do watch sheer korma and mirror o mirror uh we're definitely very excited to screen the film and uh hopefully you guys are going to enjoy it thank you